Now the Federal Reserve has done exactly what everyone expected them to do, raising interest rates by a quarter point today. What does it mean for the banks, especially the regional banks? Of course, even though Janet Yellen said rate increases would be gradual, which sent the bank stocks down today, all the financials not only do better when the Fed funds rate goes higher, letting them make more money off your deposits risk-free. It's just that some of the regionals are exposed to other factors, too. Take Colin Frost Bankers. This is a nearly 150-year-old Texas bank, re regional bank. It's based in uh, San Antonio. It's number one player in San Antonio and Corpus Christi. Just over a year ago, many investors jumped ship from Colin Frost because you can imagine it's got some oil exposure. Maybe, you know, some people think too much. And a lot of people were worried at that time that maybe many of these marginal energy producers might default on some of their loans. Since then, the price of crude has bounced back. Colin Frost stock has rebounded right along with it, rallying more than 60% over the last 12 months. However, even though oil rallied nicely today, almost back to 49, it's come down hard from where it was trading in the mid-50s not too long ago. On the other hand, based on the company's latest quarter, Colin Frost Energy loans only make up 11.6% of the total, down from 16% two years ago. Exposure to bad loans remains very low, pretty much better than all the other banks in that region. This stock's had a big run, so will more rate hikes be enough to propel it higher, or does the stock also need oil to rally, too? Let's check in with Philip Green, the chairman and CEO of Colin Frost Bankers, find out more about his company and where it's headed. Mr. Green, welcome to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank Good you. Have a seat. Jim. Thanks for having me. You know, I'm thrilled you're here, because last year when everyone was saying, oh, Colin Frost is in trouble, I said, you guys don't know the history. When Penn Square had trouble in the 80s, they weren't in trouble. When every time oil's going down, they weren't in trouble. That's not their style. You guys ended up doing great, despite the fact that oil went down. Thank you. Well, you know, Jim, just as you said earlier, we're a 150-year-old company. And as a result, we're, we've got a great culture. And we've got a mission statement that says it all. It's 21 words. It says, we'll grow and prosper building long-term relationships based on top quality service, high ethical standards, and safe sound assets. And the key word in that is relationships, okay? And so, in a sense, we are making energy loans, but we're really making loans to people that happen to be in the energy business, and that's key. You know, when, when oil was at $26, an investor told me, he said, Phil, he says, greed and fear drive the market. Right now, fear is driving the bus. And so, you know, it was, uh, it was a tough time. But I think the market got two things. Uh, maybe wrong about us. And I'm not blaming them. I, right. I've been in the same place if I were them. Right. But this, what, number one was they overestimated the impact on the Texas economy when oil went right. down w the way it went down. Because it went down about the same level it went down in the 1980s. Right. And so they thought, well, the same impact in the 1980s is going to happen. Right. Well, it didn't happen because Texas is so much more diversified than it used to Very be. Very good point. And the second thing that happened, I think, and that they missed, was that they over discounted, they heavily discounted our ability to work with our customers right. to deleverage right. and their ability and willingness to deleverage. And when you've got relationships and it's not just transactions, you really have the opportunity to make it not a bid-ass business in that way. Right. I know a lot other people, other bankers were late to the party. They came in, they, they did lend to the marginal guys. You always had the guys that you know. Now, at the same time, we have the Federal Reserve raise rates today, right. and you've got, uh, in your last quarter, you weren't sure how many times they're going to raise. Right, we talked right. about only once. Right. But now, with, with, with three rate hikes on the, on the horizon, there were one and then plus two more. That's pretty good for Colin Frost. You know, I agree with you. It is good for us. We, we, weren't, we didn't know what to expect with the right. Fed. You know, last year, we kind of believed what they were saying. We plugged sure. in three rate increases. Right. And so we got one in December. This year, as you said, we only had one increase plugged in. And, um, you know, when you, when, you, uh, when you look at the impact of a rate increase, you go back to that December rate increase, and you didn't really have much change in deposit rates right. in, right. from much, much of the banking industry. And as a result, the impact of that to us was like $20 million pre-tax. was $0.20 cents a share. So it's a big deal for us. Okay. And so we only have one factored in for this year, and it was in November. So the fact that you have additional ones are positive to us. And we pretty much, in our last earnings call, had affirmed what the street estimates were for right. us with right. that one rate increase. Now, you also talked to me. You said continue to post solid positive financial results. We increased our dividend, 23rd consecutive year, okay. despite what the naysayers were saying. You kept boosting the dividend. Uh, grew our bet, uh, loan portfolio. And you said that the year ended great. Has that continued? It has. It has. We saw yeah. really good loan growth in the fourth quarter. We saw a real turnaround. And then in the period of time, since the end of the year, we've continued to see strong loan growth. Do you think deregulation, better feel in the country, oil came back a little? What do you attribute the better feel? Because this is what I'm really trying to get at all the business people I talk to. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm a fan of your show, so oh, I, you. I, I see you. the, the uh, CEO interviews. And, you know, I want to tell you that I agree with what you're hearing, is, is that the attitude is markedly better. Is it an 
it incredible how it's much amazing. different it is? You know, uh, w one thing we do in our company, and, and every year it's traditional, the CEO goes out and we visit every location in okay. our company, okay? And you shake hands, you tell them Merry Christmas, thanks for what you're doing, because people are th the most important thing, right. all we have, and you're right? Real without, without them, we're, real we're, we're just lease obligations, right? right? And so uh, it's, it's a lot of work, because I visited over 150 locations in December, and but you hear things and you learn things. And the thing I heard most clearly, and I remember this is in late November right. and December, was that it's turned that we're seeing so much momentum from our customers, particularly the smaller customers right. and the mid-sized customers. And that customer that was waiting to, to, to buy that equipment for six months, mm -hmm calling us up and saying, hey, we want to move forward. Let's go forward right away. All right, let's leave it on that note because I really like that note. It completely fits what we're hearing from a lot of great business people. Okay, that's Philip Green. He's the chairman and CEO of Colin Frost Bankers, 150-year-old institution, really one of the best banks in the country. May have money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.